Hi everyone. This is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is risk assessment tools, risk ranking and filtering. This tool is a wonderful and useful tool for assessing the risk, ranking the risk based on the severity, probability and detectability and use a filter for scientifically derived recommendations. Let us understand the intricate points of this tool in this video. Let us see the concept of risk ranking and filtering. This tool compares the risks and based on the severity of the impact, ranking is done, including probability and detectability factors. For comparing the risks and their impact on the quality of the product, the entire operations are covered under a specific head. The main head is subdivided into several important groups. Subgroups can be any number depending upon the criticality of the operations in the main head. For example, for manufacturing, the main heads may be classified as production, QC, QA, material management, etc. For determining the impact, the other factors including severity, probability and detectability are also necessary. Risk ranking and filtering breaks down overall risk into risk components and evaluating those components and their individual contributions to overall risk. Overall risk is determined as a composite of all risks together. This can be done by scoring for severity, probability and detectability and multiplying individual scores of all the three aspects. We will learn more in detail on this scoring. Filters in the form of weighing factors or cutoffs for risk scores can be used to scale or fit the risk ranking to management or policy objectives. Depending upon the risk scoring, filters may be used for strategy on monitoring. Let us learn more on these filters in the next slide. Filters are designed based on the overall rating of risk. The overall risk could be qualitative as low, moderate or high. Filters are basically one way of deciding the strategy for monitoring the operations. The filters could be qualitative as low, moderate or high. The quantitative filters could be on a range of scoring for monitoring strategy. In this example, it is qualitative and hence this classification. This classification may be used to have a policy on monitoring the system. So a low filter indicates that the system has low potential for a failure and needs lesser focus and controls for routine compliance. Moderate filter for systems that has some possibility of failure. So moderate focus and controls are required for monitoring. A frequency will be moderate in such cases. For height of a filter, this is more critical and can have significant impact on the quality of the output if not monitored more frequently. Monitoring policy may be decided as low, may be monitored with less frequency. So monitoring frequency will be less for low filter as there is not much criticality. Longer frequencies of monitoring may be accepted. Moderate may be monitored with moderate or medium frequency. For moderate filter, the frequency may be little more stringent than the low filter. Depending upon the score and impact, the frequency of the monitoring could be decided. High may be monitored more frequently. For high filter, it is considered as very critical. So it should be monitored more frequently to have better controls. Let us see how the 
matrixing design is done. The matrix design should focus on all vital points with scoring on a 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 scale. The matrixing design should focus on the scoring. It is very important to assign the scoring. The scoring on 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 scale may be used. While assigning the score, scientific consensus should be obtained for each score. The risk assessment team should agree on the score. If the score is not scientifically justified, the assessment will not be effective. It will lead to other quality issues. So adequate care should be taken at this stage. Remember that this score is for individual subdivided heads under each department. The total of such individual scoring is called the calculated risk score. Calculated risk scoring may be made based on severity, probability and detectability for risk classification. Calculated risk scoring is only a simple mathematical expression and it is not cumbersome. It is a simple multiplication of scores for severity, probability and detectability. Score between 1 to 25 is considered as low risk, 26 to 75 is considered as moderate risk and 76 to 125 is considered as high risk on a 1 to 5 scale. The scoring for various filters may be done based on this general rule. If there is any other scientific reason for different score for filters, it may be justified. Total calculated risk score is considered for filter classification. Now, based on the total score of the calculated risk, the filters are decided. Filters are used to schedule the inspection frequency. The inspection frequency may be decided based on the total calculated risk score. The filters may be designed as low risk for a score less than 400, moderate risk for between 400 and 600, high risk for more than 600. This is on a scale of 1 to 5 as in this example. So accordingly this is how the filters may be assigned. For low risk the frequency could be less and for high risk it is more. For moderate risk an intermediate frequency may be assigned. Let us see a typical example of internal audit schedules that is self inspections for internal departments laboratory in this laboratory is the main head in this table the subdivided groups are captured as aspect and each risk ranking is done for severity probability and detectability based on the score the classification is done as high moderate or low the calculated risk rating is done as a multiplication of S, P and D. Recommendations for inspection frequency is given in the next column and a remarks column is given as the last column for justifying the selection of the filter. If you see the first aspect, data integrity, the severity is more, detectability is poor and probability is also a high value. So if you multiply 5 into 4 into 5 that becomes 100. So this is classified as high risk. Calibrations also is the same way. It is 100 and it is high risk. Testing it is moderate. The probability, severity and detectability is only 27. So it is classified as moderate. Training is classified as high. General upkeep, it appears to be okay with a very small figure of 
2 into 1 into 3 that is 6 like this you can have the same type of calculations for handling of standards sampling procedures status leveling stability studies validations etc the calculated risk rating is given individually and the total score is 682 so if you see the remarks column although minor areas of operation are classified as low risk testing sampling procedures and validations were classified as moderate data integrity calibrations training handling of standards and stability studies were poorly maintained so the impact is high risk by total score the filter is high let us see another similar example for an internal audit schedule for material management as the main head as in the previous case the same table is used and the subdivided groups are captured under aspect risk ranking is done for severity probability and detectability based on the scoring the high moderate low classifications are done calculated risk rating is also done for each individual aspect and a recommendation for the frequency of inspection with a remarks column for justifying the selection of the filter the aspect includes vendor management raw materials receipt storage sampling area dispensing area general upkeep status labeling safety precautions calibrations training etc if you see the calculations for s p and d majority of the aspects are classified as moderate out of 10 7 are classified as moderate and 3 are classified as low even if you see the calculated risk rating the total score is 443 so majority of the aspects are rated as moderate risk the risk filter is selected as moderate in this case so the frequency of inspection may be half yearly unlike the laboratory which is done quarterly in the two previous examples we have evaluated how the risk ranking and filtering can be achieved for internal audits now let us see how vendor audits schedules can be handled in this example the same table can be used here also the very important aspects of vendor are captured they include regulatory accreditations internal audit systems supply schedules quality of the material gmp compliance trends of quality vendor regulatory support market popularity market complaints qualifications and validations etc risk ranking is done for severity probability and detectability as in the previous cases classification is also done as high moderate or low based on the scoring the calculated risk rating is given with the recommendations of inspection and a remarks column for justification of selecting the frequency filter for inspection so if you see this the majority of the aspects are classified as low risk even if you see the total it is only 152 so even though the rating for regulatory accreditations and regulatory support by the vendor is medium or moderate all other important attributes are classified as low risk the overall risk filter is low so this vendor may be audited once in five years this vendor may be rated as a five star vendor because the scores are very less 
and the filter is low. Now let us see in this example another vendor audit schedule. Similar kind of calculations are done for this vendor also. But if you see this vendor out of 10, 6 are classified as high and 4 are classified as moderate risk. The total of the calculated risk rating is also 862. Majority of the aspects are at high risk. They include poor internal audit system, poor quality of the product and poor compliance to GMP, poor qualification status and validation status, more market complaints, less popularity in the market, the overall risk filter is high. So this vendor will be audited once in two years when compared to the previous vendor who is audited once in five years. Let us see other important points to note. This approach can be followed after carrying out a detailed inspection of the internal departments or vendors who supply materials. This tool is useful for internal audits for each department. Depending upon the total score of the calculated risk, the risk filters of low, moderate or high may be used for self-inspections or internal audits. So it is very important to have a detailed focus while assigning scores for each subheads of the department. This tool is important for vendor audits also. If there are too many vendors, this tool is really very helpful to have the inspection frequency filter low, moderate or high. For low risk rated filter vendors, the inspection schedule may be once in five years. For high risk rated filter, the frequency could be once in two years or even less. The same approach may be adopted for scheduling the calibrations, preventive maintenance activities to all critical equipment and systems. Based on the same type of evaluation, the preventive maintenance calibration frequencies may also be scheduled. The schedules may be revised based on the trends available over a period of time. This tool is used as a dynamic tool. Based on the data available, the risk assessment may be reviewed and reassessment may be made and revise the frequencies of monitoring as per the risk assessment outcome. I hope that this explanation is useful for understanding the basic concept of the risk ranking and filtering tool. There are several other ways and strategies to carry out risk assessment for this tool. But the basic requirement is to establish the risk rating and the filters for monitoring the inspections. Revise your, your SOP on vendor audit management to in incorporate the usage of this tool to get benefit out of this. As you can see, the self-inspection or internal audit SOPs also may be modified incorporating these concepts. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.